What's going on YouTube? This is Chop Celery, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing my Sovereign Knight Enchanter Mage build for Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, specifically for like a Nightmare difficulty run. Uh, I'm going to keep this video as brief as I can. In the video I'm going to review the skills that I end up choosing. Uh, I'll review some of my equipment, but just keep in mind um, you may not get some of these pieces just because of random loot drops. And uh, I'll go over my rotation, I'll explain why I have the rotation that I do, and then we're actually going to see this in action. I'm only going to do this uh, as a solo uh, encounter, so you can really just see how viable this build is. Um, this build is honestly just meant for tanking, in a sense, um, and survivability just through the damage that we um, are going to be doing. And which in turn is going to help us generate our barrier, in which I'll, I'll show you um, in the specialization tree for the Night Enchanter. Uh, in all my attempts on Nightmare difficulty, uh, this is just, it's been the easiest to do just because of how effective this build is at generating barrier and staying alive. So we'll jump right into the skills. Um, let's start with the specialization first. So. Uh, I pick up Spirit Blade. This is our bread and butter of our build. Um, it's our main melee ranged attack for the Night Enchanter. Um, I ended up picking up this upgrade Amplified Blade, so essentially um, it'll charge faster, and when you hit with one swing, it'll discharge all of the built-up charges, so it's just going to hit a little bit harder. Okay, so this is one of the main passives that you definitely got to pick up. So for a Knight Enchanter, you need to be within melee distance. You're really just like a melee mage, okay? Um, so this passive, it's just your mana is going to regenerate faster when you're near hostile enemies. So that's always a plus. Okay, Fade Cloak. So this uh, second skill within the specialization tree, it can be used as an offensive as well as a defensive ability. Uh, defensive first, so when you cloak you'll be invisible for two seconds and you're immune to damage for uh, those two seconds. So just in case you're going to get with like a range attack, maybe a really strong melee attack, it's always a good idea just to pop this um, because you're invulnerable during that time. Now the upgrade that I selected for this is the decloaking blast. So when you uh, rematerialize and you're inside or extremely close to an enemy, um, they're going to take a crap ton of damage. So, you know, it's just a good way to quick save yourself from damage. And then if you can, get close enough to an enemy and you're going to, you know, do some, do some pretty decent damage uh, in the meanwhile. Uh, I picked up this passive, Veiled Repost. They just, enemies take damage when they attack you. Eh, you could take it or leave it. Uh, but this, this is the most important passive out of this whole tree. So when you do damage to enemies you start to generate a barrier. Uh, so the more damage you do, the more, basically, the more barrier you generate. So this is just, it's, this is incredibly important to your survivability with this build. And then I ended up picking up the last passive. Um, so any kind of barrier that you create is gonna take longer to naturally decay, just for the off chance that you're not in the fray, um, you know, and you put a barrier on yourself, it's just gonna last slightly longer and hopefully, you know, your cooldown for the barrier will be uh, up before your barrier goes down. All right, so for the spirit tree, uh, I do end up picking up a decent amount of points in here. So obviously the first one is barrier. Uh, just because that's going to be one of the main survivability points for this build. Uh, I picked up Guardian Spirit, basically as an oh shit kind of thing. Um, just in case you're close to going down, you'll generate a, a barrier to save you, which is definitely helpful. Uh, I picked up Mind Blast just because I do like to do combos or like detonator kind of stuff, just because I'm always going to be in the thick of things. And for the upgrade, I chose Fortifying Blast, just for the off chance that there is no combo to do. Um, but you can pop Mind Blast, and every enemy that you hit, you're going to gen generate 10% um, more barrier. So, I don't know, just in case you, you, none of your offensive spells are you know off cooldown, you can just hit this and you'll generate a little bit more barrier. And then I think one of the most important passives out of the Spirit Tree is just the Strengths of Spirits. Your barrier um, is going to get a bonus 50% more, so it's just, you know, increases just how much damage you can take. So that's why I was kind of talking like, this is a kind of like a tanky kind of mage. So uh, the only other one that I ended up picking up is um, Peaceful Aura. So your threat is reduced by 50%. Um, just, you know, 
outside of this showcase, I do end up always rolling with a full party, typically with like Blackwall uh, as my main tank. So, you know, because he'll be pulling aggro away from, from me, um, just in the off chance that he doesn't taunt somebody or doesn't use a skill that'll pull somebody away, there's a, a lower chance of me getting targeted. So it just increases my ability to, uh, you know, to just keep dealing damage and not have to worry about um, a big threat coming towards me. So for the Storm Tree, this is uh, where two of my main offensive spells come in. I have Chain Lightning, and the upgrade is Arcing Surge. This is just so that way I can pump out more damage um, and generate more of a barrier. And Energy Barrage, That's this is a great ability to charge up your Spirit Blade, um, just because it has 12 projectiles. And because we picked up that, uh, that upgrade that the blade charges faster, I believe only one of these, like one Barrage, is going to immediately charge your blade to full maybe you don't even need the whole barrage the upgrade i chose with just the enemies that get hit by your barrage they have two percent less of magic resistance I, I couldn't really justify going for the other one energy storm um, despite it giving more weapon damage um, i at least like to have targeted you know dps compared to just like some random you know random uh, hits that this will this will deal uh, I chose Conductive Current. I think that one's pretty important for this. So the more uh, mana that you're missing, the more damage you're going to do. And then for the last passive that I think is super important to get for this tree is Gathering Storm. So when you do a, a just a basic attack, uh, it'll shorten your your active cooldown times. So it's just so that way you can just, you know, more of your spells are going to be ready quicker. So I think that's definitely important. Okay, for the Inferno Tree, the only skill I ended up picking up here was Immolate, just because this is a high damage, um, I guess you can call it, it's a single single DPS, single target DPS, but then again, it does have a decent area of effect, so I have been able to catch a couple enemies in this. Um, the upgrade I chose was Wildfire, just that way it gives me more weapon damage. Um, the passives that I chose, which I think there's two here that are incredibly important, Flashpoint, um, so after you land a crit, your next spell doesn't trigger a cooldown, so that's just, you know, good so you can keep quickly pumping out damage. And then the last one, um, Chaotic Focus. So this is why also we wanted our barrier to be as strong as possible. Um, so when you cast a fire spell, the spell consumes about half of your current barrier to empower it. So the larger the barrier that's consumed, the greater the bonus damage to the spell. So, um, I think right now when I was on the Spirit Tree, it said I had about 6,000. Yeah, 6,102 barrier, so that's a lot that it's it would um, end up, you know, consuming to power up my Immolate spell, especially at a full barrier. So just more DPS as well as, you know, having a higher barrier is always good. And that's it. I don't have any other skills. Um, so as you see on my hotkeys, I have a Spirit. Spirit Blade on X, Fade Cloak on B, on Y, that's Energy Barrage. My barrier is on the right bumper. I have Chain Lightning on my left trigger, or yeah, left trigger, excuse me, and X. Um, for, I do have left trigger and, and Y as like the um, Aegis of the Rift, but I don't, I uh, really don't ever use that. I was just testing it out when I unlocked it. Uh, I think this is on the Jaws of Hakon um, DLC. My Blast is left trigger and right bumper, and left trigger B is Immolate. So that's just what I prefer for my hockey scene. You know, obviously, you can choose whatever whatever feels more natural to you. Uh, but let's jump over to the equipment that I have. So the weapon I'm using is a Scepter of Razakale. I believe I just, that was a random loot. Um, I did put on, I think, the Grip. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, grip, Crest, and I put in a Master Corrupting Rune. So, you know, just I crafted a little bit more stuff to just give me some more um, upgrade stats. Uh, I do have on Cal the Pure, plus 9 magic, plus 9 willpower, plus 9% magic defense, that's pretty good. Uh, I crafted this chest piece that I'm currently wearing. Uh, I gave myself 14% magic and melee defense. I increased my spirit resistance, and then I have a, a sigil on here that I found of the Great Bearer, I think it is, so I just get an extra 100% maximum mana um, at the cost of having 50% less of mana regeneration. So that's why it's it's also doubly important that we stick close to enemies. So that way we can hopefully negate that 50% less mana regen. And then for my masterwork, I just have on hit, I gain 5 guard. Um, 
I chose that just, like I said, sur survivability, just in case my barrier goes down. At least I have guard then that enemies have to chew through. Um, I just really tried to make my, my mage as beefy as possible. So, Okay, so in terms of the rotation that I do, let me see if I can find it. There's an enemy. We're going to go after this poor little snowflur thing. Um, first, I always hit my barrier, so that way at least we have not only defense, but then I can also use my barrier to power up um, my fire spells, so we'll do that. And then I usually do immolate. Um, you'll see that my barrier will go down to about half or not, just because it completely died. So that is a really bad example. So you know what? I'll just I'll continue on the rotation. So barrier is always what I start out with, and then I'll hit immolate. You know. It'll deal a decent amount of damage, and while enemies are burning, that's usually when I'll start gaining back some of my barrier. Um, depending on my my spacing, kind of, and where the enemies are at, um, I'll usually hit energy barrage, so that way I'll charge up my spirit blade, um, as well as to gain back some barrier, and then typically I'll kind of charge in, use spirit blade and or fade cloak to make sure I don't take any any damage, um, rematerialize in somebody to deal more damage, chain lightning to continuously build up guard, and then immolate. Um, so it's kind of rinse and repeat that way, just depending on like where I'm at, where the enemies are, as well as how much barrier I have. I typically won't use immolate at all when I don't have any barrier, just because I want to be able to give it that extra oomph, um, that extra kick. So um, Mind Blast that I have, so left trigger and right bumper. Um, I only tend to use that really when I don't have any other spells that are off cooldown um, or if I'm rolling with a whole party and you know there's an enemy that's incapacitated and I want to you know uh, set it off for a combo so we're actually gonna go after this rift uh, let me just quick show you gameplay I am on nightmare um, I do have a trial of even ground on so that way all the enemies will scale to me so you know we can see the just how difficult this will be and uh, let's let's give it a shot all right, so barrier, immolate. So we're gonna immolate that guy. As you can see, he's also gonna be going through like that teleport move. So this is where a really good idea is to use fade cloak. So I don't get hit by that when he pops up underneath me. So we'll burn him, fade cloak. He missed me. Boom, I materialize this blade. All right, we do have a full barrier. So we're gonna go ahead and do immolate again. Burn him, pull that back up. Oh, I did get hit, but it didn't look like I took any damage. Alright, let's just do the fade cloak again. Alright, we'll do immolate again. Now we got them all clumped. Spirit blade. Uh, fade cloak again, just to deal a little bit more damage. We'll do immolate. Energy barrage, start building up that spirit blade again. And... Oh, missed. Ah, all right, whatever. All right, there you go. So that was the first wave. Not too bad. We'll see who comes out the second wave. Ah, shit. Uh, okay. Um, so we'll do... Barrier. Um, go ahead. We will do emulate here. Bay cloak. As soon as it comes back up. Oh, as soon as it comes back up. Um, I guess I'm just gonna have to keep on doing Emily because these pride, I think that's a pride. Right? Um, they're resistant to lightning, and that's half of what my shit is. <laughs> so I'm, even my staff is lightning. So I might have a hard time with this. Alright, let's just that's fine. Three thousand. Let's put Aegis of the Rift up. I think that just helps deflect any kind of projectiles. So that was just kind of situational, but obviously, um, if, if you don't have it, then don't worry about using it. But barrier, we'll do immolate again. Ooh, stun me, crap. Emulate. We'll rematerialize within this guy, do a spirit blade. Alright. Oh man, I keep 
generating art. Ooh, jeez. And now, man, I didn't do anything with that. I didn't generate any barrier. Alright. This is gonna have to be, I guess, a war of attrition, my friends. Uh, this is not exactly the best example, but at least you can see it's on that area. And I'm, I'm surviving. I mean, I haven't really dropped any barrier. Um, which is great, but just, God, it's... Especially against pride demons, you know. They're resistant to the lightning. They're resistant to the, my basic staff attacks as well as my two... My two, uh, other storm abilities. And I don't want to just do basic attacks, because I feel like that's going to be a waste. But... Thank God we killed that guy. And I don't know what Joe Schmo is doing. Oop! What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you... Are you glitched? No, don't be glitched. No, oh, he might be glitched. Okay. Well, if he is, I mean, you, you guys... Alright, there he is. You guys saw that it, it does a decent amount um, of damage. Especially, you know, when you do... Oh, he died. Utilizing that barrier. Um, to charge up our immolate, um, especially how much of a barrier that we have. Um, the spirit blade does a decent amount of damage, especially when you're close. Energy barrage to quickly build up that spirit blade, chain lightning as well. So it's just, uh, I feel like this build overall is pretty, you know, pretty suited towards a nightmare run. Uh, it, it, it made the game feel pretty easy, in my opinion. Um, I typically don't run solo with this kind of stuff I prefer to run with a, a group so it just <laughs> even with a group it, it made it a heck of a lot more fun um, so I hope you all enjoyed the video I'm probably gonna put out a couple more build videos for Dragon Age Inquisition I, I plan on doing a, uh, a warrior Templar next just because I feel like that's underused um, and then uh, depending on what else I'm, I'm interested in I'll put something else out so Again, I appreciate you all watching. My name is Chop Celery, and I will see you in the next video. All right, bye-bye.